Hi guys, welcome to Screen Pop channel and these are top 10 best thriller films of 2020 and 2021. Number 10. The Little Things Released in January 2021 on HBO Max, The Little Things is Washington's most recent release. It's a neo-noir thriller set in Los Angeles, where Washington Joe Dickey Deacon is tasked with hunting down a serial killer. The film received mixed reviews. It's thought to be quite underwhelming. The film nonetheless scored style points with audiences, mainly due to its great ensemble cast, which includes Oscar winner Rami Malek and Jared Leto. Number 9. His House His House, a ghostly horror movie from Netflix that also functions as a heart-wrenching drama, uses South Sudanese folklore to explore modern themes of refugee trauma and guilt. But how accurate was it? The Night Witch or Apeth that torments the main character in the movie is, in fact, a real belief held by Dinka people in South Sudan, while the filmmaker utilizes specific aspects of the myth to add depth to the refugee experience. Like any true gothic haunted house story, his house uses elements of the supernatural as a metaphor to explore negative emotions emanating from the grief, heartbreak, and isolation experienced by the main characters. Fallen real or refugees from South Sudan who fled sectarian violence only to meet the cold, unfeeling bureaucracy of the British immigrant system. While Ball optimistically tries to assimilate to this new way of life, his wife Rial is depressed, lonely, and frustrated at the uncaring and condescendingly xenophobic attitude of her new surroundings. <gasps> Number 8. Possessor Possessor is set in cybernetic world where technology is implanted into the brains of citizens. It allows for others, such as Tejia Voss, to inhabit the bodies of different people. People in positions of the utmost power are the only ones who have access to this resource, and they use it in order to assassinate others without being blamed for the crime. Ultimately, Voss finds herself at the whim of Colin Tate when the technology goes awry, trapping her within his mind. Number 7. Run In Run, homeschooled high school student Chloe lives in a secluded life under the ever-watchful eye of her mother Diane, who ensures her every need is met. Ambitious and tenacious Chloe is impatiently awaiting an admissions letter from her university of choice, the University of Washington, as she sees it not only a way to break her out of her daily routine, which is depicted monotonous, but out from under her mother's thumb. However, when faced with the prospect of losing her baby girl, Diane decides that Chloe's only future is one with her, and will stop at nothing to ensure Chloe doesn't leave the nest. While Ron employs a simple premise, it's much more than it appears. Expect something far beyond mommy dearest, and imagine instead the sheer desperation of a rudderless mother who sees her entire world, which she invested solely in her offspring, flying at the seams, threatening her most prized possession. Unfortunately, this mother's young doesn't need protection from outsiders. Though his biggest threat is the woman who swears repeatedly that she'll never hurt her. It's my job to take care of you when you need me. Number 6. Escape from Pretoria the slightly political prison thriller Escape from Pretoria works best when on-screen action is focused on Daniel Radcliffe. Playing real-life South African political prisoner Tim Jenkins as he leads a crack team of white prisoners in breaking out of Pretoria Maximum Security Prison. That's not really a spoiler, since Escape from Pretoria is based on a real-life prison break that led to a decades-long international manhunt. Still. It's hard to care about what happens to Jenkins and co-conspirators Stephen Lee and Dennis Goldsberg, even if you do know how their story will end. Even though Escape from Pretoria does feature some well-paced and visually dynamic pre-breakout prep scenes. Number 5. The Invisible Man the Invisible Man follows Cecilia Cass, a woman who escapes from her controlling and abusive partner Adrian Griffin with the help of her sister Emily. While Cecilia is staying with her friend James and his daughter Sydney, she learns Adrian has killed himself and left part of his fortune to her on the stipulation she doesn't commit any crime. 
Though Cecilia tries to move on with her life, a series of creepy occurrences convince her that Adrian is not only still alive, but has figured out a way to render himself invisible. As he grows increasingly violent and threatens the lives of Cecilia's friends and family, she needs to prove she's being stalked by an invisible man. Where are you? Show yourself! Surprise! Number 4. The Call The Call presents an interesting and unique concept that it mostly delivers on. We were surprised with how the time alternation aspect was explored and even presented on the big screen. The superb visual effects, cinematography and acting all work together to make this a tight, tense-filled experience from start to finish. So Yeon is a young woman who lost her father at a young age and just found out that her mother was diagnosed with cancer. Struggling with her situation, she suddenly receives nightly calls from Young Sok, a woman who claims to be living in the past 20 years ago and is living a trapped life with her abusive mother. With each of their situations dire, the two quickly become friends and bond together. That is until the two scheme together to alter the past that predictably changes to a future that leads to more catastrophe than benefits. Number 3. The Courier The Courier will evoke memories of prior spy movies and the tropes they often employ. More specifically, you may be reminded of the superior Cold War era spy swapping 2015 film Bridge of Spies. Both films are based on real events and have Russian spies, imprisoned agents and the swap between Russia and the West. Here, however, the swap is not an integral part of the main story and the Russian spy is working for the MI6 and the CIA. As in Spielberg's film, this is a meditation on the individual cost of doing something not for personal gain, but for the common good. There's a whole set of cinematic cliches that come with stories like that, and adding them to this mix risks overcrowding. But cliché is not a bad thing if it's done right. Essentially, if they involve characters to root for and a fair amount of high stakes to overcome. Every Russian is an eye of the state. Every room you're in, assume it is bugged. Even inside our embassy. Especially inside your embassy. Number 2. The Devil All The Time In The Devil All The Time, it would seem that director Antonia Campos had assembled all the makings of a great film. A wildly talented, if not necessarily all A-list cast, well-regarded source material in the 2011 Donald Ray Pollock novel of the same name and a story rooted in universal themes about doing the right thing and conquering evil. However, what Campos, who co-wrote the film with Paolo Campos, delivers is a supremely grim take on the world that works better as a showcase for its actors than as the violent slice of life movie too obsessed with 1950s Americana and Southern religiosity to deliver a satisfying story. The Devil All the Time is a slow, sprawling thriller, unfurling with creeping tension, but the cast's performances are more rewarding than the story. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notifications about our latest videos. Number 1. Promising Young Woman In Promising Young Woman, Carrie Mulligan gives a masterful Oscar-worthy performance as Casey Thomas, a 29-year-old turning 30 medical school dropout who works in a coffee shop with her friend Gail, played by Laverne Cox, by day. At night, Casey goes out to local clubs and pretends to be so drunk she can't walk when inevitably, a nice guy offers to see her home safely, only to take her back to their place and try to have sex with her despite her outward inebriated state, she drops the act. As the movie goes on, Casey's reason for her double life and why she dropped out of med school become clear. When an old classmate Ryan comes into the coffee shop one day and asks Casey out, she is presented with the opportunity to finally get revenge on the people who derailed her life. What are you doing? Hey. I said, what are you doing? Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from our channel and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.